everybody. Chris here. I'm so glad you're with me today. Welcome to our next edition of Five Minutes in First Peter. We're going to be studying First Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16 today. And so let's go ahead and start reading there. Therefore, ah, I'm forced to stop already. Um, I'm remembering something somebody told me many, many years ago, and that is that whenever you run across the word therefore in the scriptures, you should stop and ask what it's there for. Well, we're only in verse 13 of the first chapter. So he's, Peter's got to be thinking about what we've discovered, what we've understood and learned in the first 12 verses. What is it that generally we've learned in the first 12 verses? Well, here's the first thing, that we've been chosen by God. Those of us who belong to Jesus, who follow Jesus, we've been chosen by God. And because of that, there are a couple of things that, 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 are, that result from that. One is our identities are now rooted in in God himself. Our identities are rooted in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And we've been given, here's the second thing, a holy calling. And then we learn that we have a living hope. And the reason why our hope is alive is because our living hope is connected to, it's tethered to, the resurrected Jesus who is alive. And what is our hope in? Well, yes, broadly it's in Jesus, but we're also waiting for our inheritance and our inheritance is the new creation. That time in the future, at some point that's not been disclosed to any human, when Jesus returns and purges the earth of all brokenness and all suffering and all evil and merges the heavens and the earth into one new creation, and we who follow Jesus receive our resurrected bodies and we live forever, forever in the glory of God and with one another. This is our living hope. This is what our inheritance is. This is what we're waiting for. When Peter refers to our salvation in this text, that's, that's what he's thinking about. And so then he reminds us that we're not living in this new creation right now. We're living in a time of a lot of suffering and a lot of hurt and a lot of brokenness, even though there are some good times as well. And so we have this thing called faith. And we put our faith in Jesus and trust Jesus despite the suffering and the hardship in this world. And what happens as we do that is the Holy Spirit shapes our faith and makes us ready for Jesus' second coming. And we learned in our most recent video that the prophets in verses uh, 10, through, uh, 10 through 12, that the prophets of old, the prophets who came before Jesus, many years before Jesus, were anticipating and pondering and thinking about when this grace would happen. And this brings us to verse 13. Therefore, preparing your minds for action. He wants us to think a certain way now. Preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded. So he's wanting us to think about all this stuff. I belong to God. I'm chosen in God. The target of my life is not wealth and having lots of stuff and having uh, uh, un unceasing gratification. The target of my life, the salvation of my life, is inheriting the new creation. And so I follow in the ways of Jesus. Preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded, set your hope, our living hope, fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, you might trip and say, wait a second, I thought I was already in grace. Yes, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 says that God has lavished his grace on us. We are saved by grace, by grace. So those of us who belong to Jesus, yes, we are in grace. He's talking about another kind of grace, and that has to do with our inheritance of the new creation. He says, set your hope fully on this kind of grace that will be brought to you at the revelation, the revealing of Jesus. Verse 14, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Don't live with the mentality that you had before you realized that you belonged fully to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. When you lived according to your own ways, Rather, live with the mentality of everything that we've learned in the first 12 or 14 verses of this, of this book. Do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance when you didn't know. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. There's a theologian who defined holiness this way. Being set apart for God in every part and at every level. 
It's not just about being a good boy or a good girl. It's realizing that we are set apart for God in every way, at every part, and at every level. And so he's calling us to be holy, to see ourselves as set apart for God. We belong to God, and we've been given a special calling from God. And so he goes on to say, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. This is who we are in Jesus. So we're going to learn more about this in our next video. For now, remember who you are. You belong to God. You are of God. He's given his spirit to you, and we await that grace that's going to be revealed to us at his second coming. God bless you, my friends. I'll see you next week.